Good morning, good afternoon. I have the pleasure today of presenting coronary perforation in the prior cabbage patient. This patient is a 68-year-old COVID-negative male veteran who came to us just last week with residual anginal symptoms despite uh, optimal medical therapy, presenting mostly when he's gardening. He had a cabbage 14 years ago and has had multiple PCIs. On a recent cath, we see that his circumflex, his native circumflex, is completely occluded. What you'll notice is that the OM, which fills retrograde from epicardial collaterals from a diagonal, shows an area of tenting with a clip just above it. And that's where the vein graft previously inserted. That vein graft has been occluded for at least a year, we know, angiographically. So our plan, um, our impression of this CTO was that uh, it was a relatively difficult one. You can score it how you like. We use we like to use the JCTO score um, and give it points for whether you feel that cap is ambiguous, whether you feel it's longer than 20 millimeters, et cetera, et cetera. We thought it was in the three to four range. Um, there's also a CTO of the vein graft to the OM, which we find to be often a very convenient path to establish access to the distal true lumen. It is a 14-year-old vein graft, and as I mentioned, it's been down for at least a year. There is that epicardial collateral, which is a CC 0 to 1, which we find rather unappealing as a conduit for retrograde access. The plan then was to obtain dual femoral access with long 45-centimeter sheaths. We'll often use a 6 French for one side and 8 French for the other. We placed a 6 French AL1 into the vein graft stump to the OM and an eight French uh, AL2 with a guide liner into the antegrade limb. We anticipated going in that, uh, if you look at the NATO algorithm, that we would primarily veer toward the right on this chart where we would do the early retrograde attempts for reverse cart because that can lead to an early win once you establish good, good uh, control here distally and that we would only uh, address this with integrated wire escalation and ADR if necessary. These are our setup shots in contralateral views. You see the length is, again, about 20 millimeters. There's a little bit of a jog in the circuit that comes out of the groove here. Um, and we can visualize the path down to this clip right here where that vein graft is likely to run. So we advanced into the vein graft with a 150 centimeter Corsair and a workhorse wire, switched to a Xeon black, but were not able to penetrate the cap whatsoever. We then used a Confianza Pro 12 to penetrate the cap, advance the Corsair tip into the occluded segment, and then switch back to the Xeon black, but we're not able to make much <coughs> progress with that either. Then switch to a Mongo, <coughs> a little more aggressive, stiffer wire, also polymer jacketed and used that in both modes, both leading with the tip and as a knuckle. And we're able to advance about two thirds of the way down. Um, a Pilot 200 was also unable to advance past that approximately two third point where the wire would just sort of spin around the vessel, what we thought was vessel architecture, like a barbershop pole and we couldn't direct uh, further than that. So we retreated about a third of the way back up the vein graft and performed This is shown here with the Corsair up uh, about a third of the way in. You notice as we inject, contrast is starting to form first in what looks like vessel architecture and then perhaps extending a little wide of what might be vessel architecture. We advanced down with a wire tip, as I said, a little further and did another Carlino injection here and it did not help open up anything distally. We still seem to be in a reasonable line toward that <coughs> clip. Of note, each time we did this, the patient complained of heartburn immediately upon injection, which resolved after we stopped injecting. So this stain is uh, getting larger. It's uh, what we call storm clouds that are growing. We're going into different planes here, and it's becoming more obvious that we have violated the architecture of this vein graft. We elected at that point to leave the Corsair in place, which is uh, hopefully blocking the entrance to all these paths outside of vessel architecture. Asked a runner to gather up all the O14 compatible control release coils, and we shifted back to the anagrade approach with this cap. Um, <clears throat> in rather short order, we were able to advance a workhorse wire uh, to the cap, 
switched to a Fielder XT, which did not penetrate the cap, uh, swapped up to a Gaia third, which navigated through and was able to uh, attain distal true lumen. The Corsair tracked easily down to that position and we exchanged. Once the workhorse was in, we did some pre-dill. We then positioned and deployed a 38 millimeter long drug eluting stent. We performed high pressure post dilatation in multiple locations up to 22 atmospheres. And you see the final result once the wire is removed. The CTO is open. You see that we still have the Corsair in the vein graft. And do we coil? Do we need to do anything about this? I'll tell you that there's been this myth um, circulating that when a patient's had prior cabbage and pericardiotomy, the tamponade cannot happen. I believe this has been largely debunked as early as 2005, perhaps even earlier. Patients can get tamponade even when the pericardial. So we elected in this case to uh, go ahead and position a striker coil, a two by four centimeter long um, target. Um, these are labeled for intracranial use, not for intracoronary use. Once the coil is in position, we dragged it back to the area we thought the violation of vessel architecture had occurred and deployed it in a controlled fashion and saw no further extravasation. So the take home points here um, are that clinically relevant perforations are more common in chronic total occlusion PCI by approximately twofold. That prior sternotomy does not eliminate the tamponade risk and that coils do exist that can be delivered in a safe and controlled fashion through an 014 uh, CTO specialty catheter such as a Corsair, eliminating the need to do complex exchanges for a larger catheter and uh, risking not being able to deliver to a place where um, a perforation has occurred. And finally, cases can proceed to success by pivoting the approach on the NATO algorithm if setbacks occur but can be managed safely. Thank you very much.